Hello everyone, my name is Eric Terramons, and today we're going to be checking out Kotobukiya's Bishoujo X-Men line of the Dark Phoenix. Like most in the Bishoujo line, she's a one-on-seven scaled figure. And I just... Jean! <laughs> Classic Cyclops line. So this figure is incredibly red. I mean, the red base, the red leggings, the red face, the red hair. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Probably should have taken these off first. I'd like to apologize for the joke that you just heard. It was completely awful, but I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> uh, uh, starting with Jane's base, we've got this epic, translucent, plastic phoenix. It's so cool. The sculpt work on it is gorgeous, and the effects are very well done. We've got some awesome highlights and shading all across it with reds around the tips more orange in the center it's a beautiful base this is so cool i must say that due to the type of plastic i thought that maybe over the years it would bevel underneath or warp and it's already been a couple of years since her release and i've got no issues with her it is of course not the most solid of bases it is kind of wobbly but you know, like, you really have to bang into it. For real, like, just on your display, even if it shakes the table a bit, she's fine. <laughs> she really pegs in there super well. It goes all the way up into her high heels, and it looks good because it's all transparent orange to go with the rest of the Phoenix, so it's just absolutely lovely. The whole mold is really well done. I think it's all just one single chunk. I didn't have to attach anything other than her onto the base, but this base really is beautiful. I just, I freaking love it. More bases like these, please. Koto, you are just so fantastic. Connected into this base are her pretty boots. Now, we get a little bit of shading here and there, but not that much. It's very faint. Everything is pearlized, and it looks lovely. I just adore it. The difference in textures that you get between the, all the yellow pearlized parts and then her matte red suit is just terrific. The boots are really cute, pointy, and they go up all the way up into her thighs, where you can actually see her thighs and legs going into the boot. It's really nice. I think it might be a little too pronounced, but it's still really cool, and I appreciate this much more than something that just, like, plugs in perfectly, you know? Like... I like to see a bit of the boot coming out. We then get into her thighs, and the paint job here is excellent. I love the darker shading we get down near the boots as it slowly goes up into her hips. I really like the choice of red that they took for this. It's so comic booky, and it feels nice. Going up into her behind, we get a couple of stretch marks where I guess that would be where the behind is sort of usually painted on. This costume is really not painted on her body. The sculptor really chose to do something that felt more like material over her body. We don't really see much else of the lower part of her body like this. It's pretty covered up by the sash, which is very wide, very massive, nothing like the comics and nothing like the original illustration that Shunia had made. But I'll talk about the sculptor and their choices a little bit later. The sash is thick and it's got a bit more of a deeper yellow as opposed to the boots and the gloves. It's very wide and the sculpt work on it is beautiful. It does look like it could be an illustration in itself. It attaches all together with this super cute little phoenix clip. I freaking love this clip. It then dynamically flows all around her and it is so fantastic. I love it. The little bits of shading we get here and there help certain lighter parts to just pop a bit more. And it seems like no matter how you look at this flowing sash, it definitely feels like it's an illustration with the way the curves and the lines are so sharp. Moving up from there, we get into her body. And this has a lot of darker shading here and there where I don't necessarily like where they chose to put some of the darker shades and then cut it with some highlights and stretches on the fabric. I get what they were trying to do. I'm just not a fan of how aggressively they had done it. Her back looks really nice, though personally I think they should have put a stronger line down the center for her spine. They seem to stretch out the fabric so much here that it's a little ridiculous. I'm surprised that they show the dimples from her behind because this suit really isn't like form-fitting second skin whatsoever. It feels more like it's a latex or perhaps a superhero spandex, so you wouldn't see this. And they cut out so much of that sort of detail on the rest of her body that it's weird that they would have it just here. Getting into her stomach, it's very well sculpted, but again, I just find that the shading is a little too aggressive. We see the line for where her belly button would be, but of course it's covered up by more fabric stretches. 
and it's just a shame. It would have been nice to see that a little bit more defined. Where she's then sporting the uni boob, which, you know, I don't always mind, but in this case, I definitely have some things to say about it. More on this later. The way they did the stretches for the shoulders leading into the arms is expertly done. I really love it here. It's very, very nice. Her Phoenix Chess logo is awesome. I freaking love this thing. I love how big it is. The design is gorgeous. I like the fact that it actually looks like a thick material on top of her actual material of her clothing. It's really well sectioned off and it's a beautiful gold texture that matches up with the gold that we have as her clip for her sash. And they did a great job at making it pop over everything else on this figure. The black beneath this Phoenix logo is also a dark pearlized color. I mean, I think it fits, it works with the rest of the figure. The use of pearlized everywhere kind of makes it feel a little more cosmic, so I'm cool with that. It then goes up into her neck, and uh, I have a bit of an issue of how her neck goes into here. This is obviously where it plugs in for the rest of the head, but at the same time, the jawline for the face shows that it's another sectioned piece. So it's just there's three section pieces here. They didn't need to all three be there. I've seen Koto and other companies attach the face directly to the neck when they're going to do something like this, especially since the neck going into the suit isn't necessarily perfect. The neck definitely feels a little longer than it should be, or perhaps the head sculpt should have been a little bit bigger, though I do love the musculature and the lines that we see on the neck sculpt. And it's not terrible. It's just a little off. The gloves look nice. I mean, they're well painted and we get some great stretches in the fabric and folds here and there, which is really nice. The dynamic pose is so well done and the hands look like awesome hands that are just like crushing a universe. Or maybe she's just picking up multiple characters and just about to crush them. It's super cool. The gloves actually look like they're tubed on over the red part of her clothing, which is nice. It's well done here. Much like the boots, but a little less pronounced, which is perfect. Now here is where I have a major issue with the sculpt of this figure. The hands, unfortunately, have their nails on there. Are you kidding me? The sculptor is not going to make this suit form-fitting, but it's form-fitting enough in the gloves that you can see her nails. This is really poorly done. I can't believe that they didn't catch this sort of mistake, considering that this figure is such a simplistic figure to begin with. She doesn't have millions of things hanging off of her. This is an easy, easy fix, and I can't believe they missed it. It's awful, but from a distance, you don't see it. So, you know, on your shelf, you're never going to notice it, and friends won't really notice it unless they pay attention to that sort of thing, or you tell them, much like I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Eric, how could you ruin it for me? Jane! How could you? Getting into her face, it's really sharp, pointy, but round at the same time. I like it. I think it's cute. Starting with her cheeks, she's got some strong cheekbones, and they put some darker reddish highlights on her skin near the top part of her face. This is nice. I think it adds a nice touch to her eyes that are glowing as well. It makes them feel like the yellows in her pupils pop a little bit more. Her nose definitely feels more comic booky as opposed to anime, and that's okay. The lips are beautiful, and I like that she's not particularly happy. Though, in truth, for those of us that know the Phoenix, I feel like maybe a little smirk would have been nice here. The fact that it's a little smaller makes her body look a little bit bigger, like she's a little bit more in shape. It's a very Western comic book trick to do. So I can't fault the figure for this, because everything about this feels like modern Western comic books. Her hair is red flowing in the back with all sorts of highlights. The motion is beautiful. I love how they put so much attention to detail under the hair as much as on top, all around. It's all one piece, but it flows so dynamically. It's just beautiful. We get the cute little anime antenna at the top, which is beautiful and suits her very well. This hair is gorgeous, but I definitely would have made it redder. I feel like the paint job on it is too pale in areas and too darkish brown in other areas. So the whole thing feels like a muddied redhead. And I don't know. Wait a minute. Now that I've been looking at this, is Jean a redhead? Yes, she is. I gotta look at my comics. See that? This figure got me questioning myself. So she is definitely a redhead. This should have been fire to go with the rest of the fire. Like, I'm not saying make it like the original figure that the hair turns into fire. It wasn't particularly well done on the figure back then. And this one does look gorgeous like this. I just would have made the red a little bit brighter, maybe put a couple of oranges in there. So it brings us back to her costume and even the phoenix that she's standing on. Upon her release, she was 12,800 yen. 
you should just buy it. Honestly, that is so cheap. If you can find it for that price or lower, what the heck are you waiting for? If you're a Jean Grey fan, that is so awesome. But I do have a bunch of things to add to this. So price point wise, this thing is fantastic. She came out a little bit before the pandemic, or maybe it was like kind of like right at the beginning of it. When I bought it, I was like wanting to support local comic shops and figure stores. So I had gotten it through a company here in my country and unfortunately I did not pay this amazing price for her. She was significantly more expensive. I should have just ordered her directly from Japan as most Japanese figures are. When you're ordering Western stuff it makes sense to go through Western distributors but the second you're asking them to touch the East District that's when you're paying a huge premium so that you can help their store and I don't mind paying a bit. I'm always for it. I love supporting small businesses. I'm a small business with my own comic but I definitely have a hard time paying massive premiums. It's rough. Regardless, if you can find her on my figure collection or something like that, second hand, or in really great shape, brand new, I mean, get her for a good price. I think she's worth it. So everything you're getting just from looking at this figure, if you think you like this design and she's well done based off of your own tastes visually, she's definitely worth it. I, however, am about to start kind of taking this figure apart right now. So if you're happy with this, Skip this next part to my video, go straight to the end, and I'll give you a digital high five because I do really like this figure for what I got. Despite the little issues I had with the sculpture here and there and some of the paint apps. This figure was drawn by Shunia. This is Shunia's artwork. Isn't it lovely? It's classic Shunia. I mean, he does most of the Bishoujo line and it's very gorgeous. A lot of the older Bishoujo statues matched his style almost one for one. It was amazing and they were gorgeous and they felt like anime versions of the characters that we know and love. Because in Japan, they don't have problems with sexualizing characters. I mean, you can look at a lot of anime characters to get this idea and not just the female ones. Watch Dragon Ball, any episode, and they have a hard time keeping their clothes on and they're pure muscle. So it's just to say that they sexualize everything. They're very sex positive in that aspect. When they made this figure, Disney was taking the reins, so I can only imagine that the person making the sculpt might have had hard influence from the House of Mouse. Because this figure looks nothing like the source material of the illustration that was given to them. They made so many creative, subjective changes to this thing, it's completely ridiculous. First things first, the suit is not painted on the body whatsoever. So it doesn't look like the anime illustration at all, and it doesn't even look like most of the versions of her illustrated in the comics. I have no problem with the uniboob design. Even having this piece in the front covering it up, I think that's okay. I like it. However, when I'm getting an anime figure, I want it to look like the artwork. I like the artist. I'm buying something that was designed by an artist and then sculpted to reflect that artist. So. The sculptor to this figure's name is Tsubame, and I'm just so disappointed in a lot of the choices that they needed to do. And I say needed because I want to believe that they had no choice in the matter. Because it's still pretty well sculpted. Ugh, with the exception to those fingernails. Even the sash that we get down near the bottom of her body is just covering, like, so much of her body. It looks like a mini skirt. It doesn't look like a sash. It should have been really tiny up here and then slowly come down there. She's in a one-piece suit underneath anyway. It's not like they haven't come out with tons of figures over the years that are wearing these one-piece suits, and this includes for Marvel figures. So why are they hiding it here? The illustration that Shunya made is made to attract fans of anime and manga. This is more made to attract the Western market of comic book fans. And not all of them, but a specific demographic. Which is kind of messed up because the picture and all the advertising they used was not for them at all in the first place. So if you're somebody that is either living with, I don't know, let's say their parents and you've got a bunch of statues and you don't want them to be too show-offy, this figure fits perfectly. If you've got young kids and, you know, you're not really one to have them knowing anything about the world of sexual activity and you just don't want to really show that off, this figure will fit perfectly. So there's nothing wrong with this. It's fine. It's just there are already so many figures like that out there that why is it that they would get into the world of anime and promise us something and not deliver on that whatsoever. Despite all this, I still think this is a really gorgeous figure. And at this price point, she simply can't be beat. But if we change the eye decals and maybe rounded out the bottom of the chin a bit more, 
this would be a Western statue. It wouldn't look or feel like it's from Japan whatsoever, and I don't like that. To give you a good example, let's compare her to the classic OG Rogue. And now let's throw in this new Rogue. So these two Rogues, freaking perfect. This one here is also kind of sporting the uniboob in design, but the way that the curves and the shading are done are so well done that this still feels strongly like an anime figure. It was exceptionally well sculpted, and it matches so much the feeling that Shunia had illustrated. It's just near perfection. Heck, I even have Domino over here, where they did kind of a lot of the similar things that you see on this jean, and even Domino here is just amazing she's so well done it's just about respecting the source material and also the culture in which it comes from so that's my hard two cents on this figure i still really love it i just feel like it doesn't really fill up the place of the anime gene i was hoping to get and as for that classic figure they made a while ago it definitely has all the cues of something that's anime but i'm personally not particularly fond of a lot of the design choices they made, not really fond of the face, I don't like how the hair comes out, I think it's just, I mean, it's dated, right? So I'm comparing it to something that came out years later, and even to figures coming out now, which isn't fair. It's still a decent figure, but years back, I had the chance to pick up the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, and I actually chose not to, because I wanted to buy something else instead. So that design was just not for me. And I really do love the face and the pose of this, it's just so epic. It's just a little too modern western, and that's not necessarily going to fit with everybody, and maybe it won't fit with you and your shelf collection. So hopefully this review helped you kind of decide which side of the fence you are on Jean! If you like my video just a little bit, it doesn't cost much to force blast that like, magnetically crush that subscribe, and kinetically hit that notification bell. Your support goes a crazy long way at helping my channel. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Jean. 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 Jean! Emma!